All right, this is Joshua Jernigan with StandingFight.com, and I'm here with the world-renowned HBO home judge, Harold Letterman. Harold, what's going on? Yeah, not much. Same stuff. Getting, getting ready for the exciting night tomorrow night at the Toyota Center. Okay. How's Houston treating you? Oh, very well. I mean, it's great to come down here. It really is. Okay. You're here for the fight this weekend with Juan the Baby Bull Diaz versus Paulie the Magic Man Malinaji. How do you see the fight playing out? Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it'll be a very good fight. I mean, you know, you got two opposing styles. The baby bull is very aggressive, good puncher. Uh, Paulie Malinaji, on the other hand, real good boxer, good legs, uh, uses the ring well, really boxers, a lot of six, seven punch combinations. I mean, uh, it should make for a great fight. The opposing styles are going to make it a great fight. Absolutely. Well, as we all know, Paulie's had a history of hand troubles. Do you think that could play, uh, play in uh, favor of Juan Diaz? There's, there's no question. I mean, the Paulie he hurts his hands early in the fight. It's a 12-round fight. If he hurts his right hand in the third round, he's in trouble. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Paulie's bad hands could play, you know, could have something to do with the outcome of the fight. I mean, hopefully his hands won't hurt him and he'll be able to box it and last the 12 rounds because Paulie's not a big puncher. And I guess he's not a big puncher because he don't have good hands. But, you know, um, he, he really, you know, he really has to stay ready for this fight. I hope he will. I mean, I hope his hands don't hurt him early. And uh, it should turn out to be a great fight. Fantastic. Well, he could win this fight. I mean. Absolutely. Uh, on the undercar, you have Robert the Ghost Guerrero, and he's going up against Malcolm Clawson. Uh, who do you have winning that fight? Well, Clawson looks like a, a good, tough, strong guy. Uh, the Ghost, of course, is uh, a hell of a puncher. I mean, Absolutely. if he hits, he's going to knock you dead. So I don't know. I mean, I'm hearing all. I, I, I'm a little bit torn between who's going to win. I only saw Clawson on tape. I've never really seen him live. Everybody says he's real tough, so it should be a great fight. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. I know that Robert. Robert Guerrero was receiving a lot of flack because people said he quit when he was cut in his, yeah. and two outings ago. Do you think a win over Clawson will, sort, will somewhat vindicate him? There's no doubt. I mean, he needs this win. There's no question he needs it to, you know, to take some of that onus off of him and, uh, you know, people said he quit and whatnot. I didn't think he did. I thought it was a bad card. It really would have hindered the group. You know, the last nine rounds of the fight. Uh, but he certainly needs a win tomorrow night. There's no doubt about that. He could use that title. Uh, the fight I'm really looking forward to is uh, uh, upcoming prospect Danny Jacobs, and he's going up against Ishe Smith. Do you think they're using Ishe Smith as somewhat of a stepping stone to catapult Daniel Jacobs? <laughs> no, Ishe Smith is too tough to use him for a stepping stone. Without question, I think Ishe is going to be in the fight. Uh, he, it's, a, it's a winnable fight for him, there's no doubt, because Danny's never fought anybody near the, the, you know, nearly as good as Ishe Smith. On the other hand, Danny certainly uh, has looked good in his you know, first uh, whatever he's had so far fights, and uh, I think, uh, you know, Danny's looking for another victory. I mean, it's a very good fight. It's a Wiley veteran and E.J. Smith against a real good upcoming prospect in Danny Jacobs. I think it's going to be a sensational fight. Absolutely. What do you know about Highland Williams from Houston? Oh, I love Highland Williams. I mean, the kid is quick. He can punch. Uh, real good prospect. What is he, 19 years old? I mean, uh, he's about as good as he can get. Sensational, sensational amateur, and he's looked great, you know, in the few pro fights he's had so far. I, I like him a lot. Well, as you all, as you know, the boxing fraternity recently had a loss, another loss. Uh, first being Alexis Aguayo, then Arturo Gotti, then you have Vernon Forrest. Uh, what are your thoughts on those guys? And oh, it's, just, it's been a horrible summer for boxing in that respect. But now Nick Charles is very sick, and you know I hope everybody's out there praying for him. Uh, it's been just an awful summer for losing, you know, legends in boxing. Uh, I love Vernon. He was a terrific guy. Certainly, he didn't deserve to die like that. Just an, another example of the horrible violence in some of these big cities. And uh, I feel so, so sorry for you know Vernon's family and friends, and I wish him nothing, you know, but the best. Uh, I pray for soul, and he was a great guy, and we'll all miss him. Absolutely. Well, Harold, I know you have a very busy schedule. I just would like to thank you on behalf of StandingFight.com. Thank you for the interview. I'll see you at the fight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Guess what?